Hey everyone, Xanagir here. I know there are still a lot of people left in the dark when it comes to the specific details in the elusive cosmic ocean. So I wanted to make a quick video breaking down everything you need to know to get your own constellation. Before we get to the video, make sure you follow me at twitch.tv slash to keep up with any future runs I'll be doing. I'm working on getting 7-99 myself Monday through Friday night. Many of my YouTube subs have been coming to chat and it's been really great, so I hope to see you there. If you need to know how to get into the Cosmic Ocean, make sure you refer to my previous video, which I'll link in the description below. To start with the basics, the Cosmic Ocean is made up of 94 randomly generated levels, thank you Hectique for confirming the number, and each has an exit. It is very similar to the base game levels, except there are no shops, puzzles, or secret back layers to discover. The other major difference is that it is not broken up into worlds. Instead, it is possible to get any tile set at any time. Yes, you heard that right. You can get 10 Neo Babylon levels in a row, and yes, it is as bad as it sounds. On top of all of that, the borders of the level have now disappeared, and it is replaced by a large looping void that you generally want to avoid, as permanent falling can lead to a swift death. The void can be used to your advantage if you play it smart, gaining you quick access to the left, right, and bottom of the level without having to venture through the middle. The top of the level can be especially dangerous, especially in Neo Babylon, where elevators are liable to crush you as soon as you enter the level. At this point, anyone who isn't familiar with the Cosmic Ocean may be thinking that this doesn't sound too bad. While there is a big reason why it's not so easy, the jellyfish. At the exit of every level, there is a jellyfish completely covering the door. They will only budge if you destroy three small orbs scattered randomly in every level. The orbs can even be blocked off, so a good amount of bombs and ropes are a necessity before venturing into the ocean. A tip to help find the orbs is to break the level into quadrants so you know where you've looked and where you need to look. You can also turn down your music to hear a faint humming radiating from the orbs. They can be broken using ropes, explosions, but not the bombs themselves, throwables, and jumping on them. If you bump into the orb from the side, you won't take damage, but it will stun your character, potentially knocking you into the loop and killing you with fall damage. Now to get to the jellyfish, it works in a similar way to the ghost, in that it will chase you, and touching it will kill you regardless of your hit points. The jellyfish is much faster than the ghost, but is also a lot more predictable. If you stand still near it, it will circle you forever without touching you, if managed properly. You can use this to your advantage when making your escape to the exit. Another thing to note is that a second jellyfish will spawn if you pass the 3 minute mark on the clock, just like the regular game. When you're making your way to the exit, consider using ropes to mark your path if you have an especially maze-like layout that you need to traverse. You may also quickly notice that there are no pets or altars in the Cosmic Ocean, which means that a Kapala is almost required for a good run, with no way to heal otherwise. On top of that, poison becomes much more dangerous with no way to cure it, and Curse is basically a run-ender. Unless you think you can play at 1 HP for an extended period of time, which I'm sure some crazy person will eventually do. All of these elements add up to one of the most challenging things I've seen implemented into a video game, and I think it is incredibly well done. The rewards you get at the end, which I have explained in my Constellations video, I've seen criticized as something that isn't worth it because there isn't a big boss fight or a life-changing cutscene explaining that Guy Spelunky is actually Sephiroth from FF7. I've never agreed with this criticism myself, but if you listen to Derek Yu's justification of having no major reward in the most recent episode of The Eggplant Show, I think he explains it well. Having a cutscene or a collectible for something that only the smallest percentage of the player base 
is even capable of finishing seems trivial. The journey you must take to get to this ending is a massive undertaking, and the sheer joy you feel at the end of this is more than enough of a reward, in my opinion. Personally, I can't wait to just stare at the constellation I received for 30 minutes while I question why I spent 12,000 hours playing a game that actively begs me to hate it. I don't know. I went off on a bit of a tangent there at the end, but I'd love to hear what your thoughts are in the comments below, whether you agree or disagree with me. But I do hope I was able to teach you at least one thing you didn't know about the Cosmic Ocean. If you liked this video, make sure to like it, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.